This is the Ken Lockwood Gorge Bridge, which is located about two miles north of High Bridge, New Jersey, and carried the High Bridge branch of the Central Railroad of New Jersey across the southern branch of the Raritan River. The High Bridge branch traveled north from High Bridge and connected to the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad in Wharton, New Jersey, and to the New York and Susquehanna Railroad near Newfoundland, New Jersey. The High Bridge branch was constructed in 1875 and was used mainly to transport iron ore to mills such as the Taylor Wharton Ironworks located near High Bridge. The railroad originally crossed here via a Howe Truss Bridge located at the same spot as the current bridge. On April 18th of 1885, the wooden bridge collapsed under the weight of a heavily laden train. The train in question was being pulled by a 460 Baldwin engine, number 112, which was named the Columbia. It consisted of 40 freight cars loaded with 500 tons of iron ore, as well as an additional five freight cars loaded with 90 tons of pig iron and a caboose. We are now looking into the ravine from the northern side. The bridge collapsed as the train was passing over and the engine landed precariously on a rock ledge at the far end, while the cars and caboose fell 60 feet to the bottom of the gorge. A stove in the caboose ignited a fire which spread to the remains of the bridge. The train was carrying six men at the time of the accident. The train's engineer, a man named Daniel Bryant, was able to jump out of one of the train's windows and landed on some rocks, receiving only minor injuries. The train's fireman, John McGran, was also able to bail out. The train's middle brakeman, Frank McEnvy, was on top of one of the cars and saw what was happening ahead, so he jumped off before the train went down, as did the train's conductor, John Bangla, and the rear brakeman, August Guess. The sixth man, head brakeman Henry Helpman, who was on top of the fifth car, was not so lucky. He tried to apply the brakes in order to stop the train from going over, but it was too late, and he fell to his death with the train. His body was found pinned under the wreckage. Within six days of the accident, the railroad had constructed a temporary bridge and traffic resumed on the line. A permanent replacement was constructed in 1895 in the form of the current bridge. Remarkably, they were actually able to salvage engine 112. After the wreck, they tied the engine to trees in order to prevent it from falling to the bottom of the ravine. They then jacked the engine up and built an earthen support under it so that it was level with the remaining track. They then repaired it and returned it to service. Engine 112 remained in service with the Central Railroad of New Jersey for another 17 years before being sold to another line. The cause of the accident was attributed to the poor state of the bridge, which in spite of being only 10 years old, had completely rotted through. The railroad was consequently held liable for this accident. The High Bridge branch remained active until 1978. The bridge is now used to carry the Columbia Walking Trail, which is a popular trail with bikers and hikers in the region. Now I'm on top of the bridge and the path of the railroad has been turned into a walking track called the Columbia Trail. And this is the bridge right here. The trail goes over it. You can see how narrow the bridge is. And there's the river down there. And from here you can actually see how high the bridge actually is. So you can imagine how far the train would have fallen the train from the original bridge would have fallen when the bridge collapsed. And again, that down there is the south branch of the Raritan River.
it flows quite quickly and there's a bunch of rapids down there. And here you can see the cliff faces of the gorge. The river being down there. And the trail or the railroad continues south down to High Bridge where it would have met up with the railroad of central New Jersey. So this is the south end of the bridge. And there's the bridge traveling along the track. And you can see the pillars. And you can see how steep the gorge would have been when the train fell. It would have been a 60 foot fall from the top of the bridge to the river below. The river itself actually flows south to the city of High Bridge itself, then through Clinton. Eventually it merges up to the other branches of the Veracin and flows past New Brunswick and into the Atlantic just north of Sandy Hook. One more interesting thing, I'm just north of the bridge, so the bridge is right back there. And you can see this cut here, so you can see how they blasted the path into the rocks, creating that rock face. And this was done with 1850s, 1860s level technology, so they would have been using hammers and bits to drill into the rock and then Place, placing black powder to create charges of black powder to create explosions to break the rocks apart. And the railroad would have continued down the path to northern New Jersey, or would, would have intersected with the area Lackawanna and Western Railroad at Wharton. And this is another view of the river from the bridge.